Hello everybody and welcome back to the GST Dota 2. We are here with Orange and Evolution Esports up against MSI Evolution Gaming, Gaming Team at the net.com or MSI Evo GT TNC. They've got the, one of the longest tags in Dota. They're trying to rival MUFC who are Invasion MUFC Armageddon for the longest, worst, hardest to read tag out there. And right now I think they've, they probably have them beat if we're looking at their full name. MSI Evolution Gaming Team, the net.com. That's, that's probably got MUFC beat, especially considering the TNC comes after their name, whereas Invasion, MUFC, Armageddon, then the tag comes last. But hey, that's up for you guys to decide. We're going to see a draft here coming out. I'm Gods from Beyond the Summit. A very, very sick Gods, as you guys can hear. Do feel free to send canned soup to my address. Actually, no, don't send it to my address. My, my address is not meant to be public, but send it to Purchase P.O. Box. I'll happily eat and drink all cans of tomato soup chicken noodle soup, whatever it may be, or you can just wish me well on Twitter, I'm BTS Gods on Twitter, but more importantly, we've got ourselves a game here which I'll be casting, come hell or high storm, whatever may come my way, this flu will not stop me casting this game, Orange and Illusion Esports up against MSI, this will be my last game of today, after this game I'll be getting some much needed rest, but we'll be seeing who wins this Group C, and there'll be some loser bracket games I believe being casted. Over on the uh, over on the other language channels, or you can watch them in Dota TV. For those of you who want to follow the GST Dota 2, you can do so in Dota TV. There's a ticket available. I believe it's only three US dollars. So for you Europeans, that's like two euros and like ten cents or something ridiculously cheap. So you get all the action from two months of GST, including the GST Challenge, where we had Orange LGD International, Vici Gaming, as well as MUFC competing in some epic, amazing matches. So definitely worth checking out the Dota TV ticket if you like to watch the games in the client. But for now, we have ourselves a uh, live stream as well as well. For those of you guys who know TV, hello guys. Um, we have ourselves a match between a team who you'd expect to win the group and a team who managed to take down the Illusion Talent already. So they've already managed to start one upset. The question is, can they do any more? Can they do another? It's a it's a big tough ask. It really is. And we'll see if they can do this here. They've gone for a first pick mag into a Shadow Demon Gyrocopter after banning out the Life Cell Alone Druid. Something which actually Orange banned in their first game. So this time around... MSI decide they'll ban that themselves. Batrider and Nyx Assassin get banned that from the Orange Orange Neolution Esports side. So we're not seeing the early Queen of Pain pick from the Pinoys this time around. They do go a different direction. Orange are going to go the same direction. Luna for Mushi. KYXY Darks here. And then you've got the Rubik, which Nets has been playing a lot of. So, we'll see how they look to head, head, with, head in with this. Tinker does get banned out. So we're looking at a high Tinker getting banned out. And uh, plenty more bans coming from both the two teams before I get ourselves into the last couple of picks. I've been drinking water. I've been drinking sea coconut. For you Chinese viewers out there, you probably have a good idea of what sea coconut is. Let's see if I can show it on stream. This stuff looks like it could it could save anyone. It's just like dodgy syrupy stuff. I probably shouldn't show myself on webcam because I look like ass right now, but that is my sea coconut. Oh yeah, that stuff is meant to be saving, saving my voice right now. Well, it's well, not helping me get better. It's like It's like cough syrup kind of. And the problem is I've been coughing all day long for the last two days. Five seconds remaining. But we'll see. Eat some ginger. That's actually a probably good, a good idea. But we'll see. We'll see how, how, how I recover tomorrow. We've actually got a GD Studio vs Beyond the Summit show match coming up sometime in the next week or so. So I need to make sure I'm in fighting form for that to bring down the GD Studio. Hopefully it, it shouldn't be too hard this time around. We've got out some secret strategies prepared. But right now... More important stuff going on. Well, actually, well, hey, what's more important than a GD Studio vs BTS show match? We got somewhat embarrassed last time around. It was a 2-0 defeat, but that was just sort of easing them into a sense of security as we get the more important follow-up show match because everyone's going to only remember the most recent one and everyone's going to be hyping up the GD Studio. So when we come out and humiliate them, it's going to be fantastic. The only thing I'm worried about, even if we lose, okay, I'm okay with losing as long as I don't lose to Tree and Protector. If I lose to Tree and Protector, I probably will never play a game of Dota again. It will be absolutely embarrassing. I will I will do some humiliating things to myself if if we lose to Trim Protector by the GD Studio. I'll be thoroughly, thoroughly upset. Alright, Sanking, Queen of Pain banned out. So MSI focusing on those solo mids, the Ohio, Ohio heroes. Queen of Pain, Tinker, maybe we even see something like his Puck being banned out. Although I say his Puck, Mushi of course known for playing Puck. But this looks like Mushi more likely to be on the Luna. Five seconds remaining. It sort of it has been his hero as of late and something which he's played quite a bit of. Every now and then they've run it as a solo mid as well. So we could see 
and look to mix up this draft piss. And for the most part, we're seeing supports by that Byron. So they're worried about heroes who may team up with the Shadow Demon. The Filipino teams do like to run that Sand King. Using the disruptions to set up for your Byron Strike. Jakira as well, you do get that easy setup. And we'll have to see if they ban out the Lena now as well. There's uh, a couple more bans going out as we get ourselves into this last pick stage. For those of you just tuning in, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, this is your GEST Dota 2 action, sponsored by Gigabyte, hosted by Dota Talk, and broadcasted by Beyond the Summit. Who else? We cast all your Southeast Asia Chinese Dota for you. Ten seconds we love to do it. We love to cast all Dota. It's it's all, it's always been our focus, but not because Five of any... I, I guess there's some preference from myself towards the Chinese Dota teams at times, but it comes down to wanting to fill the gap in the esports scene. For Dota 2, there's so many European tournaments and American tournaments with such great coverage. Toby at Join Dota, AC over at EG with the Ray Cold Tournament, Drasgal, the GD Studio. They've got the TPL guys. They do such great coverage that the main place where we're needed is going to be the, the Southeast Asian and Chinese scene. You notice that there aren't any of those big name casters who come in to cast these Southeast Asian tournaments. AC's done a great job covering the G1 League, so definitely check out his cast over at the G1 League. But with these Southeast Asian tournaments, the smaller ones that are... The G1 League, the G League, where we had Toby coming for G League, AC for G1 League, those are like your premier tournaments, so... You're going to get your big-name casters, however, but when it comes down to these slightly smaller tournaments, like the GEST, your Dota Talk League, that's where there's sort of a lack of premier casters, where if that's Europe and America, if you get some of the best teams playing, you'll have a caster, even if the prize pool isn't there. But, hey, that's what Beyond the Summit are here for. That's what LD and I and Lumi are dedicating our time to, as well as all of our physical energy in my case, because I've completely destroyed my throat, completely destroyed my body. Hopefully I can get through this, though. The tree and bash continues. Oh, oh man. One day I will have to make a, a public apology to tree and protector. That'll be a sad day. Keeper of the Light still in the pool? Oh wow, that's a scary looking tri lane all of a sudden. Shadow Demon Keeper of the Light, Gyrocopter. They can go offensive with this if they really want. So, Orange Esports, they need to get something strong and defensive for themselves. Maybe we just look towards Alina. Maybe we go for Extinct's Chen. They play really well with the Chen for Extinct's. I think they go for a Chen here. It's their kind of bread and butter. They play well around it. So... I think we look... Towards the Chen. The question is... Are MSI going for a Keeper like PL? Are we looking at that combo coming out here? They can run Gyrocopter as a solo. Have Mag as your other solo. Then run that Keeper like PL trial. And alternatively, they play the more exciting way. The way that everyone here is hoping they play. And that's run Shadow Demon, Keeper Light, and Gyrocopter as the most unbeatable offensive trial possible. Yeah, guys. Let's, let's hope for that, but... We may be in for a PL pick here. I'm crossing my fingers and hoping not. But we'll wait and see. Please no. Please no PL. RNG Sports grabbed the Ohio Brewmast for the mid lane, I imagine. Actually, yeah, Hura KY X-Y plays quite a bit too, so... We could even see Dark Sea mid, depending on how they want to lane this, but... Two more picks and then we get ourselves in this be this into this game. As MSI have got themselves just their reserve time left, 30 seconds or so, so plenty of time here to consider their options. I see someone asking for a Mushi Morphling. Unfortunately, unlikely to happen when they've already got the Luna. They can run Luna mid and Morphling safe lane, but then you've got two basically can't hard carries. You need a more ver versatile overall lineup, and they've got their off lane in the dark seat. They've got their mid, they need another support, and I, I feel it's the Chen. You have the heals to deal with the, the Keeper of the Light spam. There's a definite mech buy if you don't want to get a mech on the dark seat. He can go straight for the pipe, but... Even with even if Daxi is going for that mech, having Chen go for a mech can still be very useful for your team. I mean, sorry, not going for other items can still be useful for team. You've still got the Hand of God. Well, it ain't a PL. It ain't a PL. That's all I'm going to say, guys. It's kind of like yesterday. Any hero, it's still better than Trian. In this case, any hero, it's still more interesting than PL. So, well... We're going to see how the Antimage fits in. They can run Antimage as a safe lane solo if they want to go with that offensive trial. Antimage can 1v1 the Darks here. That's something which they do really well at. Five seconds remaining. <laughs> oh, that, is, that is a golden... That is, shout out to uh, Loda Simmons in the chat who has just made what I find the, probably the funniest, the funniest Twitch comment I've seen in a couple few days. Oh my god, I'm loving that. That is fantastic. That is just a fantastic comment all around. 
you guys will probably see it. I don't know if you guys are, are enjoying it as much, but as a commentator and as occasional stream mod, it's just so funny and perfect. But we'll see. We'll see how it uh, how things go down that way. It's going to be the extinct chain, so no surprises there. The channel is definitely expecting that one. The only differentiation would have been maybe a Lena pick if they wanted to get a bit more aggressive. I'm going to be solo casting for the rest of this game, and then later on. LDA is casting over on the Beyond the Sun one shot. I'm not sure who's casting with at the moment, but I'll be casting on here for for this game. After this game, I'm done, guys. I've got to recover, get my health back, go to Fountain, aka get some much needed sleep. But we'll get ourselves into this game now. Both teams have picked up the finish their finished drafts. Ten seconds remaining. So you got your Chen for Extinct, your Rubik for Net. Question is who's on the Yep, it's a higher on Brumas. So he's probably going to the mid lane. You get sent Darks here towards the off lane and Mushi, of course. Where else does he go other than the safe lane to farm? So we'll get ourselves into this game now. That's that's your team who I've just introduced. That's your orange Neolution Esports side on the Radiant team. The big time favourites here. I'll we'll have to see if they can continue this fantastic play we've seen in their previous game where they destroyed the team from Myanmar. Team Destiny Storm or as they were spelling it in their team name, Team Destiny Strom, which I think was a big Effort towards them losing, not knowing your own team's name, but over on the MSI side, the Pinoys, the Filipino hope here in this match. We have got Rio playing the anti mage, Cast, the captain on Keeper of the Light, KRR, the Pacific 2 captain, in fact, playing the Shadow Demon, We've got Wu playing the Gyrocopter, and finally, the player with no hero, it's Jesse Vash. He's going to be playing the Mag, generally the offlaner, so I think we see Gyro go mid, or do we see Gyro trial in with Mag mid? And anti mage, anti mage can 1v1. Yeah, Antimage 1v1. He's been pulled all this regen. Whoa, even more. No, he's not going poor man he's not going poor man shield right off the bat. Are you kidding me? How much regen do you want? I don't think you need that much. But hey. Alright, he hasn't gone for that much. He sold the tangos, it looks like. He'll go for a fast he should go for a fast poor man shield. You wanna have the poor man shield because when you're harassing and right clicking the ducks, it's not for him, it's for the creep wave. The creep wave does no damage to you if you have a poor man shield. With 100% block, but just 60%, and it does a lot more damage to you. But hey, we'll see how he looks to go for this. This is something that Black does all the time with his anti mage. He gets put in these 1v1 matchups against here like Darks here, and just destroys them. His item build is poor man shield, and he gets pulled one t one tango and one sal, and he just dominates his 1v1 lane. And we're seeing a similar thing here. He has gone for the ring of protection, so this will help him get the tranquil boots up. You need that heal against the Darks here, Iron Shell. And well, it is that offensive trial lane. Shadow Demon, Keeper of the Light, and Gyrocopter at bottom. Mid lane, we see Mag. 1v1, he's going to be up against Brewmaster of Ohio. Dark CKYXY, he's going to find himself in the 1v1 against the Antimage. And that's going to be an interesting lane. You've got to see how the... It comes down a lot to the individual skill and how they play it. The battle begins. Alright, I'm back. It's a temporary mute. I've got... Cough mute number one. Let's keep tallies. How many times do I mute my mic this game? To let out some phlegm. We are going to see that anti mage up top. Let's get those CS stats going. KRI, he's got sentry wards. Probably will look to D ward the lane if he suspects something is there. Observer wards, just down by the river for now. By Rubik, and we're going to see Chen. He's going to pick up a creep. Are we looking at an early smoke gank? Maybe on mid? Has gone for shockwave low one. He'll have the skewer though. So I imagine we don't see an early smoke gank attempt on mid. He'll, have, he'll be level 2 by the time Chen and Rubik can get there, but maybe we just see a potential initiation and gank attempt on bottom lane using that smoke. You can get past these observer wards and bypass a lot using it. As Chen does reconnect now. Top lane. Antimage versus Darkseer. And, well, Antimage, you've got to go aggressive right from the start. Mana break. Harass, harass, harass. And that's where you get this pulled regen comes into play. Also having a pull man shield can help because you take a lot less from that harass, but... His build is very solid. The Ring of Protection will negate a lot of that damage anyways. Oh, not going to get those Lancets on the tower for the time being. And it looks like we are going to see a bit of a rotation. Nope, just a ward coming out from MSI. Looking for some of these supports. And well, there's Chen coming around the backside. As Essential Ward does get placed by Net with an Observer Ward on the high ground. And he's going top. This is how you prevent this 1v1 matchup causing you all sorts of problems. Next, we look for a killer anti-mage. Blink on cooldown. Careful. Surge, lift, Antimage is going to blink now. Blinks to safety. 
And this creep over here is going to cause some problems. Chen even rotates as well, so this is going to be the solution to the solo anti major 1v1 matchup. Send the trial on top. anti major is something going to be like, oh crap, what the hell do I do? He can't really do a whole lot here. He can just hide under his tower. But this is going to be a very fast T1 tower push coming out of orange. And Ryo can just sit there and leech XP for the time being. He'll blink out once the, well, the tower goes down. Are they actually going to find him? No. Whoa. Oh, nope. It looks like he has managed to fog them. I think they've seen him. Yep, they've seen him now. They should be looking to go under there, go in there, just to force him out. Oh yeah, they're just going to give him some auto attacks. Give him, give him the right-click damage. Shockwave goes down, helps pull off this creep wave, and here comes the support rotation from MSI. Shadow Demon Gibbard like heading top, but this T1 tower looks like it's going to be brought down before anything like that can even happen. No more Shockwave spam. Anti-Mage. Test of Faith could finish him off if he gets unlucky. And back to the T1 tower. They're getting to work. Antimage, blink out. No telekinesis in range just yet. And he's got no points in spell shield, so it's going to be a full damage coming out from Shockwave's Fade Ball. To say full damage, you have got natural hero spell resistance, but more importantly, well, this is going to be hard to hard to defend for MSI. They've already taken so much damage. And, and uh, RNG Sports, they've already got the better position in top lane. So, T1 tower, gone. Anti-Mage regen, gone. He's got no farm. He's got 3 CS. Think of all the gold they've used. He's used up 5 Tengos, which is what? 140, 150 gold, and he's got 3 CS. Doesn't even make up... He doesn't even justify the CS. He spent more on consumables than he's got in CS, which is not a good sign. And now we're going to see Orange potentially get a first blood here. Cast Shockwave. There's your order, their right-click damage. x -Sync gets the first blood and easy pick-off. Orange Esports get themselves up to a fantastic start here in top lane. We've got Brewmaster, Outlasting, Maggot mid. Mushi's at bottom, having an alright time against Gyrocopter. They're traded farm so far. Those two are pretty even here. And Orange, well, they're not done. They're going to keep on applying this pressure to top lane. We may see no far side came. It's gone for the bottle instead, the Darks here. High chill on the Shockwave creep. I love it. Also out of mana, so Chen probably going to look for another creep fairly soon. He can't spam any more Shockwaves, so this creep isn't going to be all. He probably goes in the jungle. Use that creep to take up, grabs another shockwave. This is actually a really good creep early on because of the amount of damage that shockwave can do. Not to mention you have 600 mana pools. So you can throw off 6 shockwave. 600 total damage potential. Oh, sorry. It does 125 damage, in fact. But that does get reduced by about... Well, by 75%. So you're looking at about 100 damage after the reduction. And to mention, no points in spell shield either. So that's not getting reduced any further. Ohio going to find himself an illusion rune at top now. And well, let me say, they're in a bit of trouble. They're in a bit of a pickle. Chen's found that other shockwave creep. He grabs it quite happily and says, Oh, plenty more shockwaves to go my way. He actually used one there to help kill off that, that, that neutral wave. Bottom lane, MSI, this is what they decide to do. Go for a gank on Mushi, but they're not successful with it. They're wasting a lot in, of investment time in this. Supports rotate bottom, abandoning this top lane. And look at Kars. He's got a Lumet. He wants to be using it, but he's just getting shockwave back. We'll see another one come in just a second. Shockwave, no. Shockwave the creep wave. Yeah. And, oh, almost hits Keeper of the Light, too. He's just going to illuminate. He's level 1. This is the big issue with these supports. Keeper of the Light needs levels, and he's not getting them. This XP lead is going to be pretty nasty. 1k XP already. Chensit, level 3. Rubik, level 3. Mantrix is level 5, but he may be in trouble. If there's a lift, he's dead. Lift! Ooh, he gets out. Test of Faith. Oh! 20 HP. Korea takes, <laughs> to get, to Korea takes an attack as well. He's going to pop the Trinkle Boots, but... That's not going to really heal him enough, and nor will it heal him fast enough. Shockwave, 38 HP. Forces a blink out. He got hit by that Satyr, he was dead. That's 52 damage, and it's going to be Keeper Light dead and said, Cast, called out. No need for a Shockwave. 2 nothing now in favor of Orange Esports very early on into the game. Mag going to go for a rotate, not even going to find that Satyr. He would have loved to have picked that up with the Shockwave, but he's just top to defend. He's level 5 as well. Whoa, shockwave, no, not going to do enough damage, I don't think. Let's say, it, it healed up. Using the Unholy Aura, and now it gets denied by Net. Cheeky bit of play coming out of Orange Esports, and now they're hitting level 4. They're pressuring this top tier 2 still. Mushi hasn't really been pressured a bot, and Ohio, well, he's had all the space in the world at mid lane. Boots, bottle. Could get some Arcane Boots, or could just rush the Blink if he doesn't want to go fast Arcanes. Apparently my computer is working hard. This is what happens when we have to have two streams up, guys. Unfortunately, one of those streams is... Not run off a PC that should be streaming. Luckily, we have the one streaming PC. We'll have more once our studio equipment arrives, but that's not the case just yet. Dyer's 
Net and KYXY. Back pressuring the top lane. There's your Arcane Boots. He's not going to have mind to actually pop them, which is a bit of an issue here, but he's going to be looking for this kill. Telekinesis sent or stop. That's the combo they were looking for there. Not going to happen, but once again, Antimage is going to be calling for support, calling for backup. When Keeper Light's level 1, what's he actually going to offer here? Not a whole lot. Centaur coming in from behind. Going to cancel the Trinkle Boots. Centaur stomp, lands, Telekinesis. Perfectly timed. There's no mana for a Fable, but not even needed. Test of Faith is there. Mushi did go down bottom. He was looking actually to turn that one around on Gyrocopter. Didn't succeed in doing so. Mushi almost seeing level 6 there, but it's Gyrocopter who gets the kill. With the early, it looks like the early phase boots help secure that one. Radiant Able to outrun Mushi, and Jesse Vash has got his Arcanes now on Mag. Also hit level 6, but this tier 2 top tower already going to be going down, so it's going to be too little too late. And oh, a higher. Doesn't even go for the clap. Immediately, just ulties. I think he maybe meant to clap there. Or maybe he just wanted to save mana. I'm not sure what his mana situation was like. He's going on to the next. He had enough mana for the clap, but... Hey, he saves mana. Look at that conservative play from him. Oh, Shadow Demon. If that Cyclone goes off, he could just go tra chase it down with a clap. Doesn't succeed in doing so. And well, top T2 tower. Down. KYXY. Easy pick up for him. We'll have to see if he goes for that mech. Chen has got 600 gold as well. Could go for a mech of his own. So one of those heroes will be picking it up. Hopefully not both. That's always the worry. And the Orange Esports, do they say top pressing the anti-mage? Or do they rotate bottom or mid and push other towers? That's really the big question here. Right now, they're going for another pick-off. Blink on Ahio. Very, very early blink of that. Surge, Telekinesis, can we get in time for a Centaur stop? Perfectly timed and played. Everything aligns for the Orange Esports gank at top lane. They kill anti major. now they rotate mid, I imagine. Look for the tier 1 mid, or go for the tier 1 bottom. Luna Eclipse. On a creep wave. Mushi man. What are you doing? He should be able to get back to his tower. I think Gyrocopter does not chase this. He wants to, though. Mushi, he stopped running for a second. He's going to go down. Nope. Well, he gets the kill, but... I think he should have kept running. If he kept running, he gets even further back? I, yeah, I'm, I don't know. It still worked out okay for him. But I feel that could have gone slightly better for him if he kept running. Also, I think he'd want to turn and Lucent Beam the Gyrocopter under the tower, but he only managed to get the Lucent Beam off, off after the homing missile. And Orange Esports say, well, let's go for Roche. We've got Jen just level 5. Two creeps is all we need. Bringing KYXY with a buckler for some plus armor. Oh, nope, they're going to go bottom. They get the tier 1 mid, now they go bottom. They'll probably go for two towers at bottom, even. Two points in the Lunar Blessing, giving them all the damage they need. And Keeper of the Light has hit level 3. That's the good news for MSI. The support Keeper is no longer just level 1, but unfortunately he's got no boots. He almost gets caught out here. Rubik's still looking. Rubik, catch him. Down, move down. No. No. Alright, no pick-off. Rubik and Chen still in the right place to find a pick-off, but they're not going to go for it just yet. They're going for a full wraparound on the tier 2. I like this decision, because... Well, actually, no, no Brewmaster Ultimate, but I still think it's okay. Where's that blink? It's, it's bought, he bought that so long ago. <laughs> wow. Tier 2 wraparound. There is no blink on Mag. He's got a skewer level 2, and the chase is now on. Gyrocopter. Chen Heal is going to be coming to play. May need one in a second. Mag does get off a nice RP on the back lines, and this actually... Gonna see Chen Hill come a bit too late. Both Darkseer and, and Brewmaster go down, but they get so much out of it. It's it's really uh I think they gave away more than they would have hoped for there. They got caught at a bit by the Mag RP. But they get a tier two, they get four kills, and anti is not really making up for much at top lane. We're seeing Trinkle Boots, Stout Shield, and 700 gold at nine minutes in, so things for Orange and Illusion Esports looking absolutely fantastic here. MSI, they played a solid game against the Illusion Thailand, but things are looking very, very Desperate against the Orange Esports Malaysian powerhouse. Mushi straight BKB. He says that's the survivability that'll prevent this gyrocopter from gibbing me every time he, he wants to go phase booting in for those kills. And with five outer towers down, well, now we look towards this last T2. Maybe, maybe look towards Roshan, and then we look towards going high ground. Once they have the key items up, the mech. What's Chen going towards as well? 2.5k gold. Even like a Necrobook? Well, top. Darkseer, he's actually winning this fight. <laughs> Can't chase it, but there was no way Antimage was coming out on top of that. Hardly burned any mana either. Even with level 4 feedback. Oh my gosh, Blink Clap. Sniped. Who needs a ward? And Luna walks right into the Shadow Demon. Another clap in 4 seconds. It doesn't even look like it's needed. Lucent Beam? No, he Illusion Block coming in. There's your clap, there's your Lucent Beam. Mushi gets himself his fourth kill of the game, and Mag, he scored out in mid. He was looking for this Rubik, it looks like. Jesse Vash gonna take a fall, and Illuminate is nowhere to be seen. 
The heals are also there. Blink clap once again. Brewmaster is going to drop the ultimate. Gyrocopter, there's no answer to this. Except death. 15 kills to 4 it's going to be. And keep it alight. Thrown up in the air. We'll see another boulder coming in just a second. Actually, Eclipse from Mushi. Gets himself a double kill. Anti-Mage. He's so keen to fight. He's put a band of elven skin. He's probably thinking straight Manta. Maybe even going for some treads with this. Thinking, I need HP now, but... Oh, what? Diakuria dead? That ain't good. That ain't good at all. Everything going against the Steyr team, and this is going to be ugly. Oh my gosh, 10k gold to 25k gold total. That is probably one of the most one-sided 11-minute gold graphs I've ever seen. I didn't want to do it, guys, and... Unfortunately for, or, um, for MSI fans, to the Pinoy fans in chat, this is not a game going all too well for them. Tier 3 tower being sieged down in just 11 minutes in. RNG Sports look like they are going to be the ones taking this game. They've got the mech up. What's Chen got? 3.3k gold. I said it could go for a Necrobook, could go for a Vlad, could go straight Pipe, could go for an Ag Scepter. Lots of good pushing items still there. And well, if you can pick off the mag here before he RPs, you're looking pretty damn good as well. Not to me if he blows an RP, there's a steal potential from Rubik. They change targets now onto the racks as they don't quite bring down the mag, but he's so low, it's going to be hard to engage here. Not to mention screw on cooldown. Okay, we actually will get sunned up. Brewmaster no ulti as well. That makes pushing here a bit harder. Soul catch with an illuminate does some extra bonus damage. I'm gonna force orange back a little bit here. Net, no earnest, no earnest shadows. That's something which will would help quite a bit with this push. Having the extra heals come in, not just relying on the mech. And, oh, I love this. Darkseid goes back and get on oh, no. it. Are we gonna see keeper light recall? Nope. Keeper light. What am I talking about? Keeper lights on the on the die side. It was a Chen test of fate sending him back. I'm thinking keeper lights gonna recall him to the fight bit. This is what happens when I cast when I'm sick. I get loopy. Very, very loopy. And we're going to see a ring of Aquila Anti-Mage. Oh, we're going to see Math... No, we're going to see Math Wraith Band. Wraith Band. Anti-Mage, that is just desperate. It's a sad, sad sight for the Anti-Mage lovers out there. And for the MSI fans. This mid racks is going to be the next target, I imagine. And Anti-Mage, well... One Wraith Band and half of a second Wraith Band. One and a half Wraith Band is not going to be enough to defend, I tell you that. Brewmaster, no split still, but he's got the Blink Clap and with a point boost. He's so tanky that he's not going to need to survive. If anything, it's just it's, it's just an initiation duel that they don't have. Jesse Vash, laughing. I think he's I think he's seen the Anti-Mage's items. He's got two Wraith Bands, guys. The defense is now possible. One and a half, one and a half Wraith Bands wasn't enough, but two may well be. Can he do this? Oh, a higher. Cheeky, cheeky, cheeky. Blinks forward, pulls the missile back, and Rubik net finishes off. Now the mid lane is going to be the next target, the next siege. This is GG any minute. It really is. You've got to feel feel that way. The Alpha Wolf even being picked up by Extinct. And he's going like what? Full Necro 3? No, pipe. Full pipe. It's another way of playing it. So we're going to see full pipe and mech. BKB on Mushi, I believe. I imagine. I'd be surprised if he doesn't know. No BKB just yet. Is he sitting back at base? No. Nope. Yasha. It's Mushi's Yasha. He's gone for some extra attack speed utility. Pipe gets popped. Illuminate. Going to get dodged. And Gyrocopter going to get picked off. Easy as 1, 2, 3. Mag. Looking for a skewer RP. Not going to happen because Mushi with an Eclipse bursts him down. And now suddenly, RNG Sports. It's, it's all over, Red Rover. MSI are going to have to be calling GG. There we go. The GG call comes out 14 and a half minutes in. Easiest game of Orange's life, it feels. Easiest tournament, because their last game was just as easy. It was a game just as one-sided as this, and Orange Esports just cruised their way through to first place in their group. They're done for today. They win their group. We're going to have the other three teams. We'll have Neolution Thailand, MSI Evolution Gaming Team, and then, well, who's the other team? Oh yeah, the Storm. Destiny Storm. That's going to be the third team looking to fight for that second place in this group. Because whoever finishes second does still advance. The two favorites, well, Neelush and Thailand and MSI will likely be the ones fighting over it. They'll have a rematch if Neelush and Thailand can beat Destiny Storm. Destiny Storm versus Neelush and Thailand will be the next match for this group. And then after that, Neelush, sorry, MSI will verse the winner. So MSI, they're guaranteed top three in this group, but... If you get third, you're not advancing. You've got to finish second. Those games, unfortunately, guys, I will not be broadcasting because I'm in some dire need of sleep, rest, 
cough syrup, Panadol, and some good old Campbell's soup. It'll be all coming for me once I rest and then wake up. But unfortunately right now, I am a bit unwell. And uh, that'll be me tuning out for today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks everyone who watched the GESD Dota 2. Unfortunately for myself, I'm feeling completely under the weather, but I hope you guys enjoyed the GSC Dota 2, sponsored by Gigabyte and hosted by Dota Talking, of course, as always, broadcast by Beyond the Summit. We love casting these Southeast Asian Dota tournaments. It does, it does really upset me that I can't cast the last three matches, but unfortunately, as you guys can probably tell, as you can hear, I'm feeling a bit miserable right now. But guys, do be sure that there will be more Dota 2 action coming out. We've got GSC Dota 2 action tomorrow. We've got Group A as well as Group D happening tomorrow. So Group A with Maneski, MUFC, and the Chain Stack. Over in Group D, we have Myth Trust, TNC Gaming, Jonet Gameware. So some solid Southeast Asian teams in those two groups playing tomorrow. We've also got another G1 League match tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Singapore time. That's GMT plus 8 once again. So be sure to tune in then, guys. But as always, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to follow myself on Twitter, twitter.com slash btsgods. And as always, follow Beyond the Summit. Click that follow link under the stream. This is our Beyond the Summit 2 channel. A lot of people are probably tuning in don't follow our Beyond the Summit 2 channel because you're thinking... Hey, what's this channel? But we have a lot of broadcasts coming up over the next few weeks, over the next few months, over the next year. And as a result, we need two channels to cover it all. So if you want to know when Beyond the Summit's going live, click that little follow button under the stream here on Beyond the Summit 2. Alternatively, you can follow us on Facebook as well as Twitter. We're facebook.com slash beyond the summit TV and twitter.com slash just beyond the summit. So guys, thanks everyone for tuning in. I'm Gods from Beyond the Summit and that is it from me today. Head on over to the Beyond the Summit 1 channel because LD is casting the matches from Group B. He'll be casting the rest of the Group B matches, and that will round off today's action. So head on over to Beyond the Summit 1. Orange win this group, but Group B is not yet decided. LD will be casting all those matches over on Twitch.tv. That's Beyond the Summit. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I'm going to stop talking before I just kill my voice, and uh, we'll be back with more Dota 2 action in the coming days, as well as right now on Beyond the Summit 1. So see you guys.